Hello, a very damp modular shed. Yes, it's raining a lot. Now today I want to look at this uh, voltmeter ammeter, which every now and again just says tips. What does that mean, tips? Okay, just press the button. So volts from the solar panel currently 26.4 amps. Not very much because it's not very sunny. 17 watts, you can see top right. So this little energy meter, um, which is self-powered, it's powered from the incoming solar panel wires. Um, and actually, because of course you've just got a shunt here, it's actually powered at night by the battery because the solar panel comes in here, comes out of here and goes straight down to my 600 watt hour battery, which is here. So I think this is an A-Torch product. Um, it's no longer available. I quite liked it because it's self-powered. It's got a nice backlight. Um, it mounts with these screw mounts onto just wood. And it's got these big connection points for your solar panel and also out to the battery. Um, but yeah, we can't get these anymore. Um, I had the LCD fail at one time. Um, I made a video about that. So I bought some more of these little LCD panels. I think I've got about five of them. And I think they came from a torch. But yeah, can't get these anymore. So I want to try and find an alternative. But with these features, um, can handle the voltage of the solar panel. So it needs to go up to about 50 volts. Needs to handle at least 10 amps. That's the most I've seen from the solar panel. So 20 amps would be ideal. Um, needs to be self-powered, have a backlight, and be currently available. So let's take a look at what I eventually found and what I'm going to use in place of this. Because ultimately, of course, I've got two solar panels. Uh, these are the two solar panels, and uh, each one of these is going to go through one of those meters to its own battery. Uh, the 600 and uh, I think it's 14 watt hour battery, which is this one, which has been in use for a couple of years. And the 576 watt hour battery, which is this one, which I've just built and is ready to be connected up, um, will go on to the second solar panel. So, yeah, let's go and look at what um, I'm going to use as a replacement voltmeter, ammeter, wattmeter. This is what I've opted for. It's called the Z3 20 amp and it looks like this. So large LCD uh, screen area and then the connections are on this four way terminal block and you've simply got input uh, six to 200 volts and this is self powered again. Uh, and then the load, the output, comes from the two middle terminals. Uh, mounting is not the best. It's just got these two uh, ears on the sides, uh, supposedly for sort of pushing into a, an aperture in a panel. Now, I think um, if I get this back cover off, we could probably put an angle bracket on here and self-tap it into the plastic and just use some L brackets to screw it on some wood or something like that. Let's have a look. Let's get the back cover off and have a look inside. Uh, okay, so let's put that in there. And that flips off. Yeah, there's uh, quite, the PCB is set quite deep inside this box. So yeah, you could self tap into there and use a couple of angle brackets. I think I've got a couple actually. Yeah, I'm thinking of this sort of thing, self-tap those into the plastic sides of this box and then use those to screw the uh, meter onto a, a flat wooden panel. Um, alternately, I came up with this idea where I've just got four uh, component cutoff wires soldered into these uh, fork terminals in one of these 15 amp uh, barrier terminal strips and then that would fit in there oh i think you have to tip it this way yeah that fits in there and then that also once this is tightened that also provides a couple of mounting points and also some better connection points 
because these are a little bit small uh, to have power in and power out. Okay, let's uh, fire this thing up and have a look at it. So as seen from the front, negative input is on the left. So I'll screw that in there. Positive input is on the right. I'll just put my 12 volt battery uh, to the side here. Oh, I'll rearrange that a bit. Okay, connect this to this battery. I uh, can't remember what voltage I took it down to. Oh, 10.3. So there's the volts, uh, there's the amps. Now the amps is to three decimal places, which I think is a little bit optimistic. Um, watts is probably just a calculation of volts times amps. Actually, I'll get a little light bulb, put it on there, so at least we get some, uh, some amps on the display. Uh, this little one watt light bulb, uh, or at this voltage, it's 0.91 watts. Okay, so the button on the front of the display um, cycles the bottom panel between four things. Watts, uh, watt hours, although it actually says watts per hour, but I think they mean watt hours. Uh, time, now I've got a feeling that this timer only counts when there is some power being drawn um, because it seems to stop when you just have voltage and no current and also effective resistance which is just a calculation r equals v over i so those four fields it just cycles around them now you can immediately see that this is a much better one button interface than the a torch unit in the shed um, this doesn't do as much but it does do a few things double click turns the backlight off and turns the backlight on and then press and hold for six seconds, which is quite a long time, goes into a set menu. And here you can have alarm voltage below this top field and you'll get an alarm. And of course there's no buzzer in here, so it's a flashing light alarm. Uh, if it goes above the bottom voltage, uh, that times out and saves the parameters. So now I've got to press and hold for six seconds again. Okay, press and hold for six seconds. Which is quite a long time. So we can set the five volt lower voltage limit and the 20 volt. Now you press and hold for three seconds, I think it is, to move to the next field. It automatically jumps between the three digits. Press and hold again. And you can set an overpower limit, but again, it doesn't alarm, it just flashes the display. Press and hold again. And you can zero out the watt hour counter, like so. Press and hold again. And you can zero out with a single press uh, the timer. And that's pretty much all this thing does. So it's nice and simple, but it's got a few additional features. Now, one thing this doesn't have is any means to calibrate it um, that I can see, unless there's a pot or something. But I think the board's going to have to come out for that. I'll try that a bit later. Um, and it does appear to be a little bit out. Um, this is reading 10.3. This is 10.2. Now, I think uh, previously when I was watching a varying voltage, I could see that this was actually about 150 millivolts out. So it's a fair way out. And of course that means that the watts calculation is out as well. Now this three digit current measurement, I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is either. Yes, that doesn't look terribly accurate either. My meter says uh, 0.095, 95 milliamps. And this is saying 86 milliamps. So if you want absolute precision, then this probably isn't the meter for you. But if you just want a quick at a glance, am I getting five amps or am I getting 10 amps from the solar panel, um, then this is probably good enough. Okay, let's have a quick look at this circuit board. Now this can take 200 volts. Um, <laughs> so you can see they've got some cutouts here between presumably the 200 volt section and the push button so that uh, the voltage doesn't get to your finger, but it doesn't look terribly good, does it? 
They're very, very thin cutouts. Yeah, it's just unfortunate positioning for that button, really. So what have we got? LCD driver chip, the big one there. This is a microcontroller. This appears to be in a uh, serial E squared prom, probably for remembering the accumulated time and watt hour parameters. Not sure what that is. It could be a power meter chip, possibly. I don't know. Um, these do not have any markings on them. There's an inductor there, so there's some power supply componentry. A uh, couple of things there and here, which could be a regulator. And then there are these resistors, which on the surface look like, well, red, red, yellow. So 220K. So two high value resistors, but also stood off the board, which kind of hints that they might get warm. Yeah, I don't quite know what they're doing there. So what I really want to do is get this PCB out because I can't see a current shunt. I don't think these are the current shunt. Um, so now the only way I can see to push this board out is to press on this button quite hard. Um, but I've also got to try and lever this this little uh, springy plastic piece which is holding the PCB in. So I'll try and do that now. Right, it's out of the housing. Uh, it wasn't easy to get out. Um, in the end, I just had to press on the display. There's no plastic sheet over the front of the display. It is a very nice display. I mean, it's extremely large, well backlit with these two white LEDs. Um, all that we can see on the front here is the current shunt, which is a tiny little, um, well, it's quite large, I suppose, for surface mount, R002 resistor which you can see is suspended between the negative connections the two positive connections are simply connected together and then of course this is where the voltage is measured and the switch is there as well everything else is on the back and no unless i can find a hidden menu there is no adjustment for calibration but uh, yeah if you're not too fussed about accuracy and to be quite honest on the solar panels uh, inputs and I'm going to put one of these I've got two of these I'm going to put one on each of the two big solar panels between the panel and the battery um, let's connect this up if you're not too fussed about accuracy then um, I think this is perfectly fine uh, why hasn't that come on uh, quite simply because I've connected this completely the wrong way around with these uh, screws exposed, I should be looking at the front of the display, not the back of it. Well, let's hope it has reverse polarity protection. That's now the right way around. Let's plug it into my battery and see what we get. And uh, yeah, that looks like it's fine. So that's it. That's the uh, Z320 amp, uh, voltmeter, ammeter, wattmeter, watt hour meter hour meter and resistance meter not terribly accurate but good big display lit up at a glance um, for the solar power uh, input that's going into my batteries right let's take a look on aliexpress at this thing and where i got it so here is this item on aliexpress um, i got it from the CI Boom store, um, $5.60. Now the shipping is $1.99, but free if you order over $10 worth of stuff. So two of these would qualify for free shipping. Um, and the description is DC voltmeter, ammeter, wattmeter. Um, it's self powered, anything from six volts to 200 volts. And the current is up to 20 amps and so that's it for this video this is the voltmeter ammeter wattmeter um, which is going to measure solar power coming into my battery in the shed but uh, for now cheerio